morning guys my name is Trevor welcome back to the Arctic Vet YouTube channel today we're working on my sister-in-law's 2004 Dodge Durango that is a beautiful car that just drove by and I can't show you guys sorry it's already out of view anyhow she ended up getting some bad fuel and now her car is running really rough I'll put you a little clip in here but the thing is we don't want it to run like that for long because it can and will cause a ton of damage so we're going to empty the gas tank because the gas station where she got fuel is honestly no hope. Like not nothing. Nothing. It, it's sad. So if this happens to you, just make sure that you keep every single receipt because you can and more than likely will be able to get reimbursed for it. Just know that the gas station more than likely is going to be pretty useless. Helpless. It, it, I don't I don't understand it they should have a policy about this because this happens way too often and then so many people are just stranded like she is she's just stranded with no car and thankfully we're able to help her out thank you God thank you Jesus let's roll that intro All right, so your first thing that you're gonna notice if you got some bad gas is you could be driving and your car just totally dies out, like chokes out. Well, to make sure that everything's okay, you check your oil, and we checked the oil in here. The oil is good. We checked coolant, we're good there. We even checked the air filter, and it did need a new air filter, so I went ahead and replaced it. However, that did not solve our problem because the problem is with the fuel. She's got that beautiful Hemi in here, that 5.7 V8. Whew. That's a big old motor for this beast. So, the only thing that changed was that she got fuel that morning and she drove all the way from Hutch to McPherson. And that's where she got stranded. So, we went with Miss Dorothy putting in the work over there. We both broke two toe straps and bought a new one. <laughs> And that new one's working great. <laughs> Spending a little bit of extra money on your toe straps so that it don't just break on you like it did this time. So what we're gonna be doing is using this Pittsburgh, you can tell it's pretty used and worn. This Pittsburgh multi-pump transfer pump here. I got this thing from Harbor Freight, pretty cheap. And these hoses, well, just so you guys know, you cannot stick that hose in through the filler because that's not long enough. That hose is not long enough to get to the tank because it goes all the way down and it comes all the way over to about here where the tank is at. And it's in there. I'll show you guys and I'll show you exactly how we're going to get that fuel out and put it into this 55 gallon drum. I believe that this guy's got a 28 gallon tank. So we're going to be pumping for a hot minute. Let's get to it. First thing is I found that access through the underneath on the back side of the vehicle is the easiest. So I'm going to crawl down under here. I want to show you guys exactly where we're going. Right there. You guys can see the axle. And we're going to go just above it. And then do you guys see this, this black hose right there? That is that is the hose that we have to disconnect so there is a 5 16 uh, hose clamp this one is the 5 16 and then this one was a weird one that's kind of weird it's at 9 30 seconds and then also the one down there I went ahead and just took them all off so that that way I could kind of push the hose on uh, get a little play with it up here while I took it off down there it does take a little bit of maneuvering with the arms to get in here. There may actually be more room on the passenger side by the exhaust. Just make sure that your car hasn't been running and that it's cold. I want you all to get burned. So what we're going to do is we've got our pump down here. We're going to take this lovely hose 
And we're going to stick it right inside of there. Just like that. We're hitting something. Alright, so now I was able to get that in a little more. And now it's time to hook up the other hose that hopefully will reach our 55 gallon drum right here. Uh, if not, we'll have a whole nother problem on our hands, but we'll figure it out. Real quick, I suggest just get a little bottle and get some gas, put some gas in there. So I just got a water bottle, put some gas in there. I mean, it doesn't look terrible, but I don't know guys, something's still not right with it. So we're ready to start pumping. We're gonna start pumping this stuff. I'll see you guys in like seven hours. <laughs> All right guys, uh, so the hand pump, like, yeah, that'll totally work and it will get the job done, but it's gonna take forever. So I went to Harbor Freight for $12.99, I think is what this thing costs. You can pick up a battery operated pump. And so what we're gonna do is hook the hose onto that end and it's gonna come out this clear tube and we're gonna stick it inside of there. I'm gonna get some extra hands. And we're gonna get that pump out of there, out of the way, and use this guy. So let's get to it. All right, so we got all the fuel out and it's now in this big old 55 gallon drum. This thing was a beaut, but we did have to make a little contraption. So we found a, a, a little air pump hose that we used to like air mattresses and stuff connected these two that clear one and this black one to our then our red one and that gave us enough length to get up here and for down at the bottom this one was the one that was in the pump in the gas tank i mean and so we used it to drop into here because this hose which actually came off of the corvette so you know those little hairline hoses that you get Sometimes they're useful. Honestly, I should have thrown this thing away, but I'm glad that I did it because it happened to fit perfectly. It's real tight right in there. No, I don't have it on there all the way, but it fit perfectly on there so that we could use that to suck the fuel out of the gas tank. So that was awesome. Let's uh, head to the store now because we need to buy hose clamps. Okay, so we think that we have all the gas out now. I want to start this puppy up one more time though. Now it's running a lot better. I still don't know how this thing is running though. We sucked all the gas out. It's been running for a hot minute. However, we happen to have an incident with a police officer next door, so <laughs> we need to take a moment before we record some more. What we'll do next is put some fuel into the gas can. I'm pretty sure I hear another officer on the way Oof, hot neighborhood today. That was wild. <laughs> I know, tell them. Tell them, say those coppers are coming. I mean, they're right there. Watch them come by. See, there he goes. Oof. Yep, it's okay, girls. Yeah, yes, the copper's just going to help. Yes, he just needs some help. Yes. <laughs> I know. Zoe's jealous. She's a jealous girl. Yeah, she is. Charlie just wants us to play ball. <laughs> You gotta go to the ball. <laughs> She's a turd. Alright, so we waiting because like I said there's activity right there. We're gonna give them some privacy. <laughs> and I don't want this thing backfiring and like them thinking it's a gunshot or anything because they're literally in that situation right now. So God please protect all those officers and the individuals in the vehicle, however many individuals there are, so that this comes to a safe conclusion and resolution in jesus name we pray amen thank you god thank you <laughs> all right situation's a little going on but it's a lot better now so we're idling at around 500 rpms it's everything's looking good sounding good it's still on e it's still running low <laughs> and it's still running <laughs> man these hemis are something else i tell you what they run on i don't know I don't know, fumes? Yeah, fumes. So like I said before, we got a new air filter in here. It's doing great. 
I don't have it hooked down all yet because I'm still checking a few things. Um, the oil's doing good still. We're literally just waiting for the gas, wherever it is, to run out. Alright, here we go guys. Started right up. Idle's great. Sounds good. You can see that there's just a little over E. There's actually five gallons of gas in here, which is fresh gasoline that we got from the gas station. Put it in there. Now it's running great. Let's check the smell of the exhaust because earlier it smelled like rotten eggs. Oh yeah, that smells good. Some good fuel right there. So now, the real moment of truth is to go ahead and drive this puppy. So I'm going to jump in here right after I grab my wallet because, well, the officer's right over there. And I'm just literally going to drive right around there into my drive and back. Make a loop. Let's go. Alright guys, that did it. It is back up and running. The car is doing great. This is a couple days later after the repairs have been made. We've estimated that we spent just about $300 to fix this. Hopefully this will help you guys if you ever have that kind of trouble. <laughs> Currently, we are working on another video outside here. But, wanted to end this vlog off, so smash Slam that thumbs in. up if this helps you. Or you enjoyed the video. Click the red subscribe button. We'll catch y'all on the next video. Hey, we got that bad gas at 4th and K61 Quick Shop in Hutchinson, Kansas. So, I try to avoid that place. This isn't the first time it's happened. And I'm sure it happens a little bit everywhere. But, that'll do it for today. Have a great day. God bless y'all.